7 o'clock. It opens at 7 o'clock, so you better talk fast, guys. Uh, maybe they, they, they can go after me. I want to give my... No, okay. It goes from... <laughs> it's open from 7 until tonight Monday. until That's 7 true. on Sunday, right? Monday. Monday. 7 on Monday, so... So yeah, that's important democracy and stuff. Um, what's that? Okay. Um, I'm gonna spit on my gun now. Hey, good job. Oh, I think we should start with secretary and then. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, secretary's gotta go first. Alright. So for our lone secretary candidate. For the lone one. Yeah. Please welcome Jamie.
so yeah, I did that, and I'm, I'm trying to keep track of all the members um, and get people organized and doing stuff. So, uh, hey, I'm not done yet. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> You want to have more people involved and get people thinking about it, but they don't find out the themes until... We're probably not doing themes again. And if we do do a theme, we will be finding out about them in September, and they'll be fairly general. John, do you mind so if I talk about this for a minute, or do you want to take a um, the, the themes aren't even that big of a thing. <coughs> They're, what, 10 points out of 40, or something like that? 10 out of 50. 10 out of 50. Yeah. So you could submit a game that totally flies in the face of the theme. And as much as that would be kind of annoying, it, would, it could still come and, you know, it could still be competitive and it could still be something you put in your portfolio. Hey, I put this game in the, uh, in the indie game contest. Um, and I, I think that's part of the problem is we want everyone to submit a game. You know, I, I, I'd like to, e even if your idea is for a game, just to start the conversation, you know, get, get things moving. I think we'll submit that, um, what was that game we tried last year? You know, me, Calvin, and everybody. I think we'll try to sit that game this, this year, or next year. All right. Who's the coach? Mr. Rodriguez.
dedic and an intense dedication to our freedoms <laughs> as students of the University of Baltimore. This year, uh, I'll be managing the finances for this stuff. So, uh, I, I, did, I, I may be a treasurer for eight clubs on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I may be a treasurer for eight clubs on campus. They just troll ever. But the Digital Designers Guild is my home. It's my baby. <laughs> and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so please, get out there and don't vote for me. <laughs> Because I'm running unopposed. <laughs> and nobody else wants to do my job. Thank you. I'm Chris Warman, and I'm your VP of Finance for 2012. <laughs> Eraser. either of these candidates. Good luck. Populous clubs on campus. See for yourself, people with laptops. 
clubs. In a little over a year, this club has gained 83 members. 83! That is a remarkable success. However, as amazing as this is, it doesn't seem to get us anywhere with the public UB campus. As not, at least not as much as we can. You might not have noticed, or you have, but we aren't gaining a lot of publicity. We are unknown to the majority of UB, and uh, with the help of my laptop, I'll show you proof. I'll give you examples of, of neighboring clubs on UB. Criminal Justice Association. When you search them on the UB search, you can get about 300 people results. SGA. this out? It's because this is a problem that exists. We don't talk to students directly, and because of this, we are, it's like we barely exist in the, the UB campus. It's a problem that I will solve if elected. But if this is going to work, we need full cooperation from the club and its members. And I have a few suggestions on how we can do that. Would, uh, one of the solutions I offer are surveys, either doing paper surveys or a, a digital surveys that you can do online, such as SurveyMonkey and Doodle. I, I propose doing bi-weekly surveys on SurveyMonkey or any other site. We have to know what our presence is like on UB campus, and for those who do know us, like SD members, they have to know us for the right reasons. They have to know that DDG is a club that gives its members the tools that they wouldn't be able to get with just a four-year SD program. This club shares knowledge about the game industry and unique ways to get an edge over the growing competition and potentially take the industry into places that we can't fathom. Their, their knowledge of DDG is our power. The second option uh, I was going to propose are photographs, visual media, and yes, with video cameras, cameras on your laptop, your mobile phone. Share photos with your friends, family, random people on campus. I, I implore you not to be ashamed of this. If you don't have, if you don't have one, uh, a social media site, a, a profile, make one. Be active in this. We have to show that we aren't embarrassed about what we do. Post pictures of events any chance you get. And after all, a picture is worth a thousand words. Not only will you be students see these, but also future employers. And finally, you. The blood of DDG. Its members keep this club alive. And you do. By coming here every day, having casual talk before meetings, after meetings, during meetings. 
you are all able to bring publicity to DDG. In the blog party, we were able to give at least a shot of showing ourselves, having fun. We had fun doing it, and we were successful. But we don't have to save that enthusiasm for just one day. Let us keep this feeling alive. Like they say, if you don't, if, if you got it, flaunt it. What we got to flaunt is the fact that we are DDG. We are proud to be a part of a vibrant industry. And I want to encourage you to be this way. These things are a start, my proposals. This is a foundation that we can add to the foundation of G DDG predecessors. And it's an investment that we can make for DDG successors. to talk to people who 
who are in the gaming industry and hopefully get contacts from Premier or if anybody else has contacts. And not only sending out press release kits for the IGS, instead of just sending them an email, I would rather go talk to Urban Knight or sit down and find somebody at City Paper to talk about the IGS in their paper or in the magazine. Because it's a really good idea, it should be bigger than what it is already. So that is basically one of my main focus. Another thing is I want to help you guys professionally develop yourself. I'm going through this whole professional development transition. I used to have pink hair, I used to have blue hair, I had funky outfits, and then I started working at the Career Center and they changed all of that. I used to work in the AIT office my freshman year. That's how I actually learned about EDG. So I know who to go talk to you for SDE majors. Like I could go talk to your guys' advisor and say, if you have any incoming freshmen, can you give them this brochure about DDG? And it's a club they should probably think about joining. It's going to be more of the business aspect, but to bring a presence and draw freshmen in, we have to show that we are also fun. So when you do see freshmen going in and out of classes, talk to them. I encourage that. Also, I want to get it to where DDG members, we can present about TDG inside classrooms, especially the freshman classrooms, so that we can get more members. Our biggest thing is, currently, we are big. A lot of people know us, but they know us for the wrong reasons. And another thing is, we don't have a strong presence outside of UV. So, if I get elected, I would like to change. Q&A section for both of you, uh, where the officer is going to ask a few questions, and then the rest of the general body are going to ask a few questions. Um, since you got to go, since Janie got to pick first, you get to pick whether you go first or second. public relations isn't just a, an officer position to appeal to students, it's also to appeal to people who work in the game industry. How do you go about, how do you plan on going about to connect DDG to more game industries? Alright, first use is the Career Center, of course, because I work there. But um, I will try and find out what companies are close to Baltimore and around Baltimore. So it's going to start off with a lot of research. I can have the counselor to help me on that. And since they know how to research these things, hopefully I will too. A second thing is calling these companies, not just sending emails, actually calling them, writing letters, to be able to get in contact with somebody, saying, hey, we have this program on our school, and our students are very curious about the companies. And, not, and that's another thing why I wanted to have the LinkedIn accounts, <clears throat> to have our website ready and to even have the seminar ready to show that we do host these events and we know what we're, we're we kind of know what we are doing but we want to expand on it so as VP of PR I rather instead of just sending out emails I want to actually keep hassling these people so we can get in contact with them uh, other than what we did this year, you know, posters, website, uh, etc. How do we get more people to come to Biggs? <clears throat> um, to get more people to come to Biggs, you have to have it more appealing. 